He's jumping from the top of one crane almost straight down, boom, onto this other crane. And all he does is compact and absorb his momentum and continue moving. It's so impractical that his shin bones aren't just sticking out of his knees or something because the amount of impact that that would have taken on a straight drop is just crazy to me. Hey GQ, my name's Jesse LaFlair. I'm a professional parkour athlete and you're watching The Breakdown. First clip up, classic, Casino Royale. This has introduced millions of people to sort of the level of movement that parkour athletes do. And the athlete in this one is a legend. Let's check it out. All right, I'm gonna pause it right there. So what's beautiful about this entrance scene is that I know that a lot of the background stuff is actually happening in real time. So like him running as the truck slammed into that dirt is real. He strides up and once he gets onto that red beam, if you rewind it back a little bit here, this is a climbing technique. He is putting pressure into his feet, he's using his hands, and he's climbing up. A lot of the sequence is done at height. So I know that they had safety lines on the actor but it isn't like he's being supported. It's actually just in case he falls off. So he has to deal with the real sequence. I think what's really cool about this crane shot is one, those three strips you're seeing is actually grip tape. So coming from someone who's done this particular stunt, it helps you from not slipping <laughs> and falling off. So production had to put grip tape all along that thing. I'm gonna pause it right there. He's on a safety wire for sure, especially this particular shot where you can see that the actor is actually face in. Whether they cheated this down below or not, I'm not sure. But the actors and stunt person, are, they're gonna be on wires once you get to a certain height. I'm gonna scrub through this real quick. It's a really legit looking jump. The problem is when he gets to the, the height of that crane, because you've been at this incline for so long, you're really out of steam. So he had to step off of the edge of it and really launch arms first, which to be honest with you, at that height, there's no real way to save yourself. One of the scariest things to do while you're doing parkour is jump to something with an underhang, which this has, because if your fingers peel off, the only thing that he's reaching for is his hands. His legs can't really do much. If his fingers peeled, there's no way to save this. So usually when we jump to something, we tend to try to lead with our feet to cushion that momentum. But, but this particular jump, he really just didn't have an option. So he risked his life for this one. Before we go to this jump, I should probably break down who the actor is in this sequence. Sebastian Foucan is iconic in the sport. He's actually one of the first practitioners, tracers, if you want to call it that, to start parkour with his friend and teammate, David Bell. What's funny is that they kind of had a falling out about what the core values of the parkour space is. So Sebastian kind of went on to to create and start free running. Right now, parkour is the most fast and efficient movement going over, under, or through any obstacle that's in your path. And free running is more about the self-expression, right? It's the flips and tricks, the way that you creatively interact with any environment around you to sort of express yourself. This is one of my favorite jumps because it's very practical. It's very real. He's running on this beam that's only 12 inches wide. He is at height, maybe not as high as they're depicting it, but they're up there right now. He is on a safety wire. Pausing it. So what's really sketchy about this particular jump that they used, and I'm sure that he did this more than once. If you look at this point, his feet go through the structure. His hands are holding onto the top. We call this a running stride to cat hang. Thankfully, his hands did grab where they needed to grab. Good job for the safety wire. Okay, that definitely deserves a pause. This is ideal. This is how you would do this movement. You'd run, you'd step off, you would drive your arms up into the air. This is one of those things that we often do to allow our power and our strength to help us travel up and over. What we don't ever do is this next couple frames. This weird back arch with both legs behind us. Maybe it's a long jumping technique, I'm not really sure, but it's nothing that I would ever do, especially while going to an obstacle that is in front of me and with a huge drop under me because I need my feet to help absorb that momentum. I 
have to guess that no matter what happened next, this performer, stunt double, whoever it is, feet ended up slipping and the safety wire had to catch him or he hit his butt or grabbed onto that wire and probably hurt his hand so much. What we would have done is called a precision where you actually land precisely on the edge of something. And the reason why we do that is because it actually allows us to control our body and save us in many different ways. If I had a little bit too much power, I can absorb that momentum through my legs by landing on the edge and the balls of my feet, which is right in the front part of your foot. Let's skip ahead to one of the most iconic parts of this scene, up on the cranes. All right, I'm gonna pause it right there. I love this fall so much. Sebastian just being this very veteran practitioner of movement to be able to do this fall naturally and make it feel aggressive, get that turnout where he's like, whoa, looking down at the ground, I think it's incredible, right? When you get into that 20, 30 feet up, you feel that adrenaline. Your body is telling you to like, do everything to save yourself. So if I asked you to go walk on a curb or run on a curb, you could do it comfortably because you know if you step off, you're okay. But if I put that same width of a curb up 20, 30 feet, all of a sudden your body goes into like safety mode and your brain is telling you to do everything you can to like not get hurt. That is where parkour training actually comes into play. A lot of people can jump to something and kind of land safe but it's when something goes wrong that we see our, our top pros save themselves in this like really beautiful, efficient way. Okay, this crane to crane shot looks like it's like a 30 foot drop. He's jumping from the top of one crane almost straight down, boom onto this other crane and all he does is compact and absorb his momentum and continue moving. It's so impractical that his shin bones aren't just sticking out of his knees or something because the amount of impact that that would have taken on a straight drop is just crazy to me. The reason why this is more practical is because one, the sand is gonna help dissipate like so much of the energy that would have been into the ground. That is gonna save his heels, his knees, his ankles. One thing that we do see him do almost immediately is go into a roll. Probably one of the most important elements in parkour is understanding how to dissipate your momentum. By rolling, we're taking energy that normally would have been like straight down, and then like this, where there's all this impacts happening, and we're actually going down and across the ground, which is actually helping all of that momentum that would have went through our body and dissipating it across the ground, which is gonna make life way easier. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Sorry, I had to pause that. That fall is pretty gnarly. It feels like this would definitely fracture a rib, especially if it was practically done from the height in which they're depicting it from. That impact to your chest would have been like, <laughs> I love the way Daniel Craig, ooh, perfect roll, and then overshoots the edge down onto some structure that just happens to be kind of soft enough to cave in and bump them onto the ground. Made hey, for effort, for sure. So overall, Casino Royale Chase is easily one of the best chases ever made for TV or movies. It's referenced every time I show up on set and they ask me to do something. Like two thumbs up, 100%. Sebastian Foucault did an incredible job, which really did help grow the sport of parkour and free running worldwide. Next clip we're gonna watch is Ang Bak. So I've never seen this film. I'm excited just in this first few frames of the comedic vibe that I'm feeling out of it. I feel like what's ridiculous about it is the structures that they're going through seemed very like weirdly like who carries something like that. Very rarely do we just like, all right, I'm gonna go on a one mile run and jump on things I've never tested or never saw that's in my path. But in a lot of these chase scenes, we're kind of trying to depict that, right? So one thing you, we try to be aware of is trying to make it feel real and the more realistic that you make that feel, it makes it feel a little less comedic. In a practical sense, if I was running away from something or someone and I had never been in that environment before, you have to deal with the elements that are in front of you. And that's where like, yes, your training and your ability to adapt is really gonna come into play and allow you to, to get past and continue to get away from whatever it is that's chasing you.
he doesn't want to knock these kids down and so he he jumps over them in this like really insane looking like piked position so a pike is anytime your hands and your body comes down to your legs when they're straight it pretty much looks like he could have just like scooted through them real quick whoa, and kept running but i guess this works too Oh yeah, they got through him. I need to stop it at this running and jumping off of somebody. For someone to unexpectedly get stepped on, their entire body, especially in a little plastic chair, would probably go flying forward and just smash into that table. But for whatever reason, this guy is like super strong and sturdy and allows him to like boost off of his shoulder to get a little bit of height <laughs> to clear the rest of the gang here. <laughs> okay. okay, this is ridiculous. It's like, uh, just sometimes in the middle of the street we have a set of spikes and weapons for no particular reason. What are those, gardening tools? I don't know what's going on. But, good thing our man here is flexible enough to hit a solid split, a little V-kick, breakdancing in the air, straight over all of the obstacles. I mean, I guess it's parkour because it's fast and efficient. I personally have never done a full split in the air to get over a set of metal spikes. But like I said, it works. I love that they have this like expectations, like the guy that's like super talented and then like reality, people like trying to do it and it just doesn't work. But I gotta back up real quick just to see this like jump approach. This guy is hitting some sort of like trampoline or something because the way that he's setting into the ground he's leaping up a little bit and then putting his momentum downward which obviously shows me that he's trying to create some sort of reaction on whatever surface that he's leaving off of whether or not it's a little mini tramp or something clearly he needed a little bit of help getting this height and luckily he just rips his pants and nothing else happened in this scene could have been worse. Flexibility is one of those things where like, there are certain athletes in our sport that are like way more flexible because they train it, they work on it every day. I myself am flexible in a lot of ways, but it's almost like this active flexibility, right? So if you wanted to see me do a full split right now, I can't do it. But when I'm in the air, the way that I can pike down or cork and swing my leg and re-catch myself in these interesting positions while in movement, I feel like I'm almost more flexible because of the sort of kinetics of it all happening and allowing my body to sort of react and twist and active flexibility is important. <laughs> all right, this is both amazing and ridiculous. This is very much like a Cirque du Soleil, circus ring arts maneuver. You don't see it happen very much in parkour, but it's incredible and it's really cool that he was able to do this. I'm sure that's not real barbed wire. Even if it was, he barely touches it, so that's kind of cool. If this was me approaching this obstacle, I definitely wouldn't have piked through it. Odds are I literally just would have ducked under it or if you know I had to go through it for some other reason I would have did a dive roll so literally just diving through it rolling on the ground and allowing myself to pop back up and continue my momentum forward <laughs> all right hold on I just want to see something the first guy does this vault and clears like a bat of boiling oil. And then the second guy, if you actually slow it down, I'm pretty sure his head would have just dipped deep into that oil and fried his entire brain before doing this roll. But yeah, let's just keep watching. I mean, it's sick. That's a really beautiful aerial, which is like a cartwheel with no hands through a very narrow space. I would have just ran through it. But okay. All right, let's fast forward a bit. Yeah! So that was sick. What's cool about this is you can use a tire as a trampoline. I've actually trained with a bunch of parkour athletes in Mexico that have built their entire course out of like crates and tires. I've done many a front flips off of the edge of a tire, but for him to launch that double front flip over these guys, that's sick. Again, practical? I don't know, but it works and it, it was very efficient. So there's many ways to get over a fence. There's actually one of our vaults is literally called a gate vault where you kind of pop up onto it with your hips and then you flip over it. And it's a super controlled fast maneuver. He chooses to actually do what we call a tic-tac in this scene. Watch him step off of the wall. Oh, that's super interesting. You know, I just was gonna pause this to slow down what he's doing and I know it's a tic-tac, 
But what's really interesting I'm noticing is he, he came in with his left foot. If this was me, I would have came at a sort of steeper angle and stepped off with my right foot, which would have popped me right onto the fence. But I can see as we scrub forward that what he was trying to do was get high enough to put his right foot on top of the fence so that he can control it and vault over. The little additional 360, again, he's, maybe he's just dissipating that extra momentum he had from twisting off of the wall and it gave him a good view of the people that were chasing him. So could work, little flashy, but I like it. So as a performer, I always question like, are there wires involved? If I look at this, I don't think so. I think they just practiced this. I think they all actually did it. As I scrub through, do you feel the weight of every step? You watch these guys just kind of taking this foot because they don't know if it's going to hit him in the face or where it's going to hit him. He's giving them full weight. So I think this is a practical gag. They probably had to do multiple times to get it right. One of the cool things about parkour is that it has sourced all of these different elements from different sports and lifestyles, things like breakdancing, gymnastics, martial arts. It really, at its core, is movement. I am constantly looking at different action sports and things that I can pull from to create something that is rooted a bit differently in the sport itself. As time goes on, it's almost like free running and parkour continues to evolve into its own thing, and that's something I find super interesting. So for a scene that is like, definitely funny. The movement in it is like super legit. It might feel a little ridiculous, but what's happening is like serious control. I'd be very curious to see this entire film. I think I have to watch this after this, especially because we're quarantined. I got nothing better to do. <laughs> Next up, I know this clip pretty well. Season 7, episode 1, Hawaii Five-0. I had a little guest star role and unofficially the longest parkour chase scene in television history. Yeah. <laughs> So the way that I got involved with this scene is they knew they wanted to do a parkour chase. They knew that they wanted to use a professional parkour athlete, just based on, I guess, my creepy look and I guess my ability to, to act. They decided to pick me. So I got the dream job of choreographing the best chase scene I could possibly come up with in the streets and buildings of Hawaii and Honolulu. All right, so first off, that was my first time ever going through glass. It's real glass, it's tempered glass. What they do is if you look at the very bottom corners of the door, there's actually a little pyrotechnic that pops it right as I'm about to hit it. Scary part is if they don't pop it in time, I'm probably not going through it and I'm gonna boom, slam my face and arm and shoulder and fall back and then glass will just kind of rain on me because he popped it late. So in parkour, we practice everything, right? In stunts, a lot of times, especially for television, you don't rehearse it. You talk about it with your stunt coordinator, you work it out and you do it. And if there's something that you don't think you can do, it's your responsibility to step up and say it. It really does rely on you just to be honest with yourself and be practical with your, your own life and your own safety. I'm gonna pause it real quick. So that's actually called the descent. It's something that is happening more and more in the sport. People are getting more comfortable with going down the outside of buildings and controlling their momentum as they drop down from one platform to another. I don't recommend that anyone ever does it because this is probably one of the most dangerous maneuvers in the parkour space. I myself am on a wire. They have to do that for insurance reasons. I tried to get them to give me as much slack as possible to make it feel the most realistic so you can feel that impact and it doesn't feel floaty at all. And you can tell that that's real by one of the times where my feet slips and my body comes kind of slamming into the ledge. So throughout this whole sequence, there's a lot of moments where we only did it once because either it was too dangerous, the setup was too wild. There are other sequences in which we did it many times, you know, running up cranes nine times. The descent sequence, I definitely did multiple times because they want to film it in different ways. So the actor definitely has a stunt double. One of the craziest things for you to keep in mind throughout this sequence is that for many of the shots, his stunt double, his name is Justin Sunquist, he had to wear this mask of the actor's face. For everything that I'm doing, he's also doing most of it, but also in the restriction of this like weird 
prosthetic mask. One of the little elements we battle every time we show up on set to do one of these scenes is what are we wearing? A lot of the times it's like, oh, you're the businessman. So they, they want you to be in these like business shoes with heels on them and like jumping to a rail with a leather soled shoe becomes a lot more slippery. In a lot of ways, being in these sequences for television really tests our uh, ability to adapt, which is a very parkour concept. All right, we gotta pause it to shout out the super commonly used POV angle for parkour is actually a GoPro mouth mount. We hold it. Some people actually just bite the GoPro, literally like, stick the GoPro in their mouth. There's companies that make a little like scuba diving mouth guard pieces that you put on and put it upside down so it's on your chin. And the reason we do that is because it's the most sort of realistic practical angle that you can get in this POV style. You don't really get to see it in this shot, but this taxi comes sliding in as I turn the corner. I'm actually getting up on the hood. I have to step down onto the curb blind and then lift myself up right as he's hitting his brakes to help not get hit by a car and continue this chase. The best part about working in film and television is it's this giant collaborative process. Everyone has the same responsibility to make this one thing happen in the right way. In particular for that scene, we had drivers that had to come in and go either a certain speed or stop at a certain point or turn their car to block me. On top of that, me and Justin, who are running through the street, have to have a certain cadence and a camera guy that's in a camera car riding past all these other cars going the opposite direction down the street to get the shot. That it just really does take a lot of coordination and understanding of everyone's action on the day. I don't remember exactly how it was written on paper, but I, I believe the way it was written is one line singular kind of paint the picture of where it's happening, but not exactly what's happening. Certain shots like, you know, I think they wanted to do the car stuff. I know they wanted to do a crane shot. It obviously is direct reference from the Casino Royale clip we've seen. So some of those elements are, are painted in there and then it's just figuring out how to do it. Probably one of the most technical and scariest stunts I've had to do in my career. So this was one of those shots where the director and stunt coordinator were like, we want to do the Bourne Ultimatum shot. And if you're not familiar with that, there's this moment where he jumps off a roof into a window of an apartment. This particular shot, it worked out incredibly but it was also terrifying because there was no way to practice it. I'm going through sugar glass, which can still cut you wide open and ended up slicing my wrist. But you have to remember, oh, I need to break the, the window with my elbow so that my face is protected and I'm not cutting my face open. So there's that moment right before I hit where you go, okay, that's working, get that elbow up, boom. But that's what parkour is, like knowing your current limit and trying to push past it just ever so slightly, right? It's about progression. And that's actually how you get further than the guys that try to skip the steps and go too far too soon. The director for the sequence, Brian Spicer, he was like, your character is like Terminator. I don't, you don't get tired. And I was like, okay, that's interesting. So throughout this sequence, you never see me like breathing heavy or, or having like this kind of realistic tiredness to me. Was I, Jesse LaFleur, tired after all this? Honestly, I don't even know how. I, I, I was so good after we wrapped, I'd go home, I'd roll out my muscles, I'd drink all these recovery shakes. But besides that, no, for some reason, I was pretty good. Even when I got home after shooting, I was like surprised about how healthy and happy I was with my physical shape. I'm gonna pause it right here. Again, dreams do come true, right? Like I watched Casino Royale, I thought that was amazing. He's running on a crane. I hope I get to do that one day. The production did grip tape my crane as well. It is clearly not as high, but it's 100% real and practical with no wires. But where I'm paused right now, if you look closely at my mouth, that is the GoPro mouth mount in, I don't know why the editors chose to use this shot because I'm, definitely did this crane run like multiple times and maybe they just missed it but I think it's very funny that it's in there again no wires jumping over a real gap there's a real drop below me so if I scrub through I'm stepping off of this wobbly little rail and jumping feet first to this other rail and then I continue on by going rail to rail to rail all the way up 
I, again, every sequence like this, I just tried to build in as much technicalities as I can. Whether the audience can see that I'm stepping off rails right now didn't really matter. It was just about trying to show like the efficiency of being in control while being chased. So next up, we have the classic scene from The Office. The reason people shout at us, hardcore parkour, every time we're out training. I love this clip because they explain what parkour is. This is parkour. The goal is to get from point A to point B as creatively as possible. While at the same time creating a whole ridiculous image of what people think it is. YouTube started to really make parkour popular because of all the viewership that it was getting. So people's interpretation of trying to create their own parkour clips to get views looked a lot like this. Parkour, parkour! It was people just trying to do stuff and making an ass of themselves. Yeah! You know what I do love is just like, how excited and how much of a good time they're having. Cause that is kind of like parkour, man. We have a great time out there, <laughs> but we definitely don't do leapfrog. One of the biggest things that this captures really well is the fact that they are making a video. Not every day I go out and train do I have a video camera recording me, but I usually have one with me and I usually am trying to film clips. At this point it's become essential, right? Because we have Instagram, we have social media, we have YouTube, we have all these different elements um, that are allowing us to be seen and build followings, which is getting us paid campaigns and cool projects. Really, the, the growth of parkour and free running came out of people filming and releasing those videos. What started in the forums before YouTube of getting these really digitally bad quality clips of someone in Russia doing a new trick that you'd never seen before. Truck to refrigerators to dumpster 360 spin onto the palace, backflip gainer into the trash can. Yes, yeah, gainer! Yeah, yeah. Well, what I love about this piece is this is actually part of what we do. When we go out, especially when we're training with friends, we'll look at a thing and go like, can you do this? Can you run, vault off of this, step that? A lot of the stuff he's saying is actually real, but what happens next, I guess is real too. So for those of you guys who don't know what a gainer is, he's actually saying what the last trick in this sequence is gonna be is to stand on the pallets and do a forward moving backflip and landing somehow in that trash can that's already filled with garbage. Yeah! <laughs> what went wrong here is that he did not check his surfaces. One of the most common things that injures people is they don't test something. They don't know if a brick wall is sturdy enough or a rail isn't wobbly or welded properly. He just thought, eh, it's got a fridge inside of it and it clearly didn't. Parkour. I'll never really know the positive or negative impact that this scene has had. Because I think what they were trying to say socially was like that this isn't what it's not, right? He literally goes, this is what it is, this is what it's not. But what most people took away from it is like just saying parkour and kicking things. It's kind of funny, so whatever. This next clip is super iconic. It is District B13 and the creator of parkour, David Bell. All right, let's stop it here. This is super iconic. The maneuver he's doing is called an underbar. He actually steps off the heater, grabs a bar, and then shoots his feet and body through a pretty tiny window. This is real. I mean, he's doing it through sugar glass. He goes all the way through, and it's a pretty legit drop on the other side. A lot of this sequence is efficient. A lot of it seems really practical. Even when he's stepping off of people in that first clip, like it's about speed and getting away. And that's what I love about this is it just feels so like real. Like, yeah, that was way faster than checking to see if the door was open. A lot of this stuff I've watched, I've tried to figure out, is he wearing a wire in any of it? And you might be like, well, he's got no shirt on. So clearly he's not wearing like a harness or a vest, but there is something called a Hong Kong harness, which is more like a belt. It looks more like a climbing harness. And um, I found a sequence that we'll talk about later on where he was wearing a safety wire. And I have to imagine that he has one on for this, but I don't think 
So, I mean, he comes in from so deep in the door that if there was a wire going out, it would be breaking on the roof, which means touching the roof as he's getting pulled into this. I love this. It's just pop, slide all the way down. Again, almost like using that underbar technique to get into the window below him. What seems a bit fake in this piece of the chase is his trust in a rope that he somehow sees at a window that has no shutters or anything on it. We don't know if that's attached to like an antenna. Personally, wouldn't go jumping out of a super high building to a rope at full speed and just hope that it saved my life. I love that he's just like now swinging completely on the outside of this building and kicking people in the face. As he whips around the building, this was the scene that I did see that he was on a safety line for. It makes sense to me. I mean, again, he's part of a major motion picture and they can't risk him dying because they did actually do it pretty high up. I don't know if you guys have ever climbed a ladder before. It's kind of difficult, right? You gotta like, to where are my hands and feet going? He just like shoots up that ladder so efficiently. All right, I'm gonna pause it right here because I love this. I love this shot. There's clearly some like random boxes there that made it easier for him to step off of over this corner gap. But I love the angle of this shot because the elements are being shown to the viewer, right? There's this like spike fence. It's at this crazy height. If we back up to, to David Bell approaching this and just kind of scrub through it, what we get to see is like, this really nice foot placement, he kind of hurls over the wall, he's clearing the gap, he's spotting his landing, and the reason why I don't think there is a wire and that this was practical is that we, we get to see him go almost all the way through until he does this roll. He ends up not doing a perfect shoulder roll. The reason is because he was cutting across this angle and if he rolled the way that his momentum was going or wanting to take him, he would have hit the other wall that was on the outside of that structure that he jumped to. He's almost going what we call a gymnastics roll, which you don't want to do outside on concrete because it literally goes over your spine. The point of doing a shoulder roll is like, you're trying to go like a rounded shoulder where it goes across your back and then just makes as minimal contact with your spine as possible. So not a great roll, David, but I see how it was necessary to, to do that and that made it a more efficient route to go. What makes this drop different from a lot of the drops we're seeing is one, this is substantially higher than most of them. He's hitting his feet, engaging obviously our strongest muscles in our body, our legs. Then he puts his hands down and lets it kind of kick him forward so that he can continue. And because you're having four points of contact on the ground, it's actually dissipating it by a large percentage. I love that in this, we're getting to see some of the vaults, right? We just saw David Bell does a speed vault where his hand hits and his legs kind of slice through and he goes over the obstacle and then the guy chasing him does that classic Kong vault where we see both of those hands hit and pulls his legs through and continues with all that speed. All right, definitely worth a pause right here. So this gap is in France and it's called the manpower gap. People have actually flipped this gap They've actually put up a fence that makes the gap harder because they didn't want people jumping it. But I believe people are still now jumping it and they have to clear the fence as well, which is a new element and challenge. What's n worth noting, and it doesn't necessarily make sense in the scene, there's not much run up, right? So if you were to back it up right before the shot cuts out, he's just stepping from one side of this thing to another. When we get to the wide, it doesn't make sense of where he's coming from. So all of a sudden he's just like on this 10 foot platform. How did he get there from this big slide? We don't see, I don't know. Either way, this is real when we hit play. Just watch how much the rocks kind of take that impact and shoot out as he goes into his role. Ah. District B13, really it is one of the most realistic portrayals of parkour. I mean, there's very little in it that seems either unnecessary or flashy. And that is part of David Bell's history, right? Like he was at the core, the creator of parkour. So much of what he trained wasn't even just about being fast and efficient and, and capable of 
overcoming anything that got in his way. It was also about challenging themselves beyond what you could imagine the sport is now, which is more of like an action sport and a lifestyle. All right, guys. Well, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys had as much fun as I did. Peace out, everybody.